time to add a border to our 2021 Mighty Mile a Minute calendar blanket. And this year, we're going to make a border using the Brick Stitch. If you like the Brick Stitch as much as I do, then definitely check out our Brick Stitch baby blanket tutorial, because we made an entire blanket project using just the Brick Stitch. The Brick Stitch is elegant, it's simple, and it's a great way to use up different colors from your blanket. Now you can make your border in all one color, and I'll explain how to do that, using two colors, and I'll show you what that looks like, or using three colors or more, like I've done. This is a simple two-row repeating pattern, and it looks best if you end on an odd row. But really, <laughs> if you run out of yarn, it doesn't really matter what row you end on. But I'll explain why it looks the way it does in the tutorial. Adding every three rows of border will give you a, one more inch. So one more inch per three rows, or two inches in height, two inches in width, because remember the border is running around all sides of your blanket. The final blanket measurements for me wound up being 47 inches wide by 68 inches long. Now that's also because I've done a little bit of blocking to my blanket and there was quite a lot of stretch and ease to come out of my blocking. And if you have questions about blocking, stay tuned to the end of the show because we're going to talk about blocking then. So let's grab our hooks! Grab our yarn, we'll head on over to the craft table, and we will add a border to our 2021 calendar blanket together. Please visit our shop and purchase a pattern. It helps support our show, and we'll put a link to our shop in the description box down below. Our border pattern consists of a two-row repeater. There's an odd row and an even row. The odd rows use 45 yards approximately per row, and the even row uses around 90 yards, or double what the odd row uses. And because I'm going to be doing the odd row, the even row, and finishing with the odd row, I'm going to be using around 90 yards per color of the two colors I'm using for my border. But keep how much yardage you need for each row in mind in case you want to add more rows to your border. So odd, even, odd, even, you can keep going, and the Odd rows require about half what the even rows do, as far as yardage is concerned. You're going to want a pair of scissors, a yarn needle, and the hook we're using is the same one we've been using all along. It's a 5.5 millimeter, also known as an I or a 9 in the US, possibly a 5 if you've got old hooks from the UK. And of course, we need our blankets! So once you've got all that together, we can get started. We're going to start in the top right hand corner, or the top corner of the last strip we made on the blanket. So that would be the top of the December stitch, right up here in the corner space. You're going to grab whichever color you want to start your border with. We're going to put a slip knot on our hook, and into that corner space we're going to join our yarn with a single crochet. So you use the loop that's already on your hook, you pick up a loop in that space, and single crochet. Chain 2. Hop across the first shell. Those three double crochet count as a shell. You're going to bounce over top of them, find the space in between, and single crochet into that space. Chain 2. Hop over top of the next shell, find the space in between, and single crochet. Chain 2. This brings us to a corner, our join, and a corner. We're going to single crochet into the space, chain two, hop across the join, treating it like a shell, and single crocheting into the next corner space. So you chain two to hop over a shell, and you chain two to hop over a join. Chain two, hop over the shell, find the space in between, single crochet. Chain 2, hop the shell, single crochet into the space. Chain 2, hop the shell, single crochet into the space. That's a corner space, it happens between the strips, that's a join, you treat it like a shell, chain 2, hop over top of it, and single crochet into the next space. And that is all you're going to do all the way across, I'll catch up with you at the next corner. That is the top of the blanket done so far. So you've got a single crochet in between every shell, chain two to hop over top, and when you reach the seam between strips, 
single crochet in the corner space, chain two to hop the seam and single crochet into the next corner space. And that just keeps things nice and even all the way across. Chain two, hop the last shell into the corner space, which is the corner space on the blanket, single crochet, and we want a little extra give in the corner. So we're gonna chain three and single crochet all into the corner. So every, each of the four corners on this first row of our border is single crochet, chain three, single crochet, all worked into the corner space. The sides are super simple because all you have to concern yourself with are shells. So chain two, skip the shell, find the space in between and single crochet. Chain two, skip the shell, single crochet in between. Chain two, skip the shell, single crochet in between, and so on, all the way down to the bottom. And when you get to the bottom corner space, which is all the way down here, there's the bottom corner space, chain, single crochet, chain three, single crochet, all into the same space. Then as you work across the bottom, it's exactly as the top. So single crochet in between shells, chain two to hop over top. You're faced with seams again, so you single crochet into the corner, chain two to hop the seam, single crochet into the other corner, and so on and so on away across the bottom. Single crochet, chain three, single crochet in the other corner space. And the sides are easy. You're just concerned with shells. So that is the foundation row of our little border. Nice and simple. Just take your time, take a breath, <laughs> And I'll see you back around at the beginning. That's me finishing the last side. I've chained two to bounce over my last shell. That brings me up to the corner space that the whole thing started in. I'm going to single crochet into it. Chain three. So it's single crochet, chain three, single crochet in every single corner, and there's four of them. But since we started with a single crochet, I'm just going to slip stitch to join. Now, if you are not changing colors, you can slip stitch into the next space and chain three and wait for us. If you are changing colors, you can snip your yarn and fasten off. And you can take a moment to weave in your tails if you want, or you can work over top of them. It's entirely up to you, but we're gonna grab color number two. Color number two, we start with a slip knot on our hook. Now, normally, I like to start in a corner, as you all know. And if you want to start in a corner, you're more than welcome to. This really isn't a very complicated pattern, but since if you're not changing color, I directed you to just slip stitch into the chain two space here and chain three, we're all gonna start in the same place together. This does not affect the outcome of the border and it just keeps us all on the same page. So you're gonna join with a slip stitch and chain three to begin. This is gonna look very familiar to the shell stitch that we bordered the entire uh, blanket with. Every single border was the shell stitch. Chain three counts as a double crochet. You're going to double crochet twice more into that chain two space. I'm gonna work over top of my short tail, but of course you can weave yours in later. And that's all you're gonna do in every single chain two space all the way across. You know what, I will weave my tail in later too. <laughs> Three double crochet in each of those chain two spaces. That's the space between single crochet stitches from the previous row. So your little single crochet stitches are going to show between your shelves. So into the space, three double crochet, nice and easy. No chains between shells. You're just double crocheting three times into each space all the way across and I'll catch up with you at the corner. That's three double crochet in each of those chain two spaces between the single crochets all the way across. So no chains between shells, you're basically just double crocheting. And that reflects this lovely little shell stitch border that we had on each of our strips. 
nice little solid row. When you get to a corner, and if you were starting in a corner, you would basically do the same thing that we began with. Join with a slip stitch, chain three, that chain three counts as a double crochet, and then you finish a shell. But every corner looks the same. We work three double crochet into that chain three corner space. And some of you may be wondering why we're using three chains in the corner and not two, like I often do. And that's because single crochets are short stitches, so you need a little extra give in the corner. Three double crochet, chain two, only two chains because the double crochet is a tall stitch. And into that same corner space, three more double crochet. So shell, chain two, shell, it's that classic granny square corner. All four of your corners are going to look like this. And if you started in a corner, you would have chained three, worked two more double crochet, and then continued with the row or worked the whole corner first. It's entirely up to you. But like I said, this is a very simple little pattern. You're basically just using the double crochet stitch. And the only chains you work in this entire row are right here in the corner. You need two chains in the corner, and that sets you up for your next little odd row. The brick stitch is such a pleasing stitch. And off we go. Three double crochet in every chain two space. That's across all four sides. Shell, chain two shell in every corner. And your corners are three chains from the previous row, but only two chains on the double crochet row. And that's all you've got to do. I'll catch up with you back at the beginning. I'm just on my way up to finish this row. The last thing I come up against is the little chain three corner, so we don't want to miss that. Three double crochet, chain two, three double crochet into that corner space. So all four corners look the same. Shell, chain two, shell, or three double crochet, chain two, three double crochet in all four of the corners. So it doesn't matter if you started in a corner or you started in a chain two space. And we all started here, unless you started in the corner. Doesn't matter, wherever you finish, you should be butted up against a chain three that began the row and you're gonna join to the top and slip stitch. So it's all double crochets all the way around with little chain two corners and there's only four of them. No chains between your double crochets, but of course, because we're working them into chain two spaces, you get that little shell effect. Easy peasy. Now, if you're not changing colors, you are just going to slip stitch across the next two stitches and single crochet into this space between shells. And then you're gonna continue with this row one single crochet, chain two, single crochet in between shells, chain two, single crochet in between shells. Or if you're changing colors like me, you want to take a moment to fasten off. Weave in your tails and I will be joining my yarn in the corner this time. So it doesn't matter where you join. You join with a single crochet either in between shells or you can join with a single crochet in the corner space. I'm going to join back there, but like I said, doesn't matter. Wave in your tails and through the magic of editing, I'm going to show you what the third row looks like using just two colors before we come back and I demonstrate using a third color because I've decided I need a little more red in my blanket. If you are going to use two colors for your border, this is how it's going to look. So color A sandwiches color B in the middle and the reason we want to always end on an odd row for this brick stitch border pattern is that it highlights those pretty little shells. It kind of frames them. So you end up with almost a, a little block stitch look all the way around your blanket. Now I love that two color look and it's very attractive and if you just want to do the three rows that's what it's going to look like. I however am going to take out the blue. I'm going to put in red because I've decided I want some more red in my blanket and I'm going to do the third row with red. And then I'll be able to show you what three rows of this looks like. You can repeat this border pattern, odd, even, odd, even, odd, as many rows as you want, but I recommend ending on an odd row because that, that odd row just frames our little shells ever so nicely and you get sort of a block stitch running around the outside of your blanket. 
So that's a two color row. Let's take a look at what three colors looks like. To begin our odd row, we're going to start with a slip knot on our hook. I'm going to join my yarn in the corner with a single crochet. Just like we did to begin the border row one. Chain two, and you know the rest. Single crochet in between the shells from the previous row. Chain two, that hops you over top of a shell. And of course now we don't have any seams to worry about. So you're just single crocheting in between shells, chaining two to hop over top. And if you are only using one color and you started with a single crochet right here, you just chain two, single crochet into the space between the next two shells and so on. And when you get all the way back around to the beginning, remember your shells are single crochet chain three, not shells, corners. <laughs> your corners are single crochet chain three, single crochet. And I'll show you that one more time when I get across. And then chain two, skip the shell, single crochet and so on. And wherever you wind up, when you're back at the very beginning, Chain two to cover your last shell and slip stitch to join to that first single crochet. And that is exactly the same no matter where you start this pattern. I'll catch up with you at the next corner just to show you what the corners look like. And then you're on your own for the rest of this row. And there is the three colors worked into the border. And you can see how you still have a nice little framing around those little shells from the previous row, but now that I'm using red it really pops because it's running along the top edge of the blanket. I like both. I like two color and I like more color. <laughs> and once you get up to the corner, remember with the odd row you chain your last two to skip the shell and on the odd row the corners are single crochet, chain three, single crochet. And it's three chains not two because the single crochet is short. And we need the room there for two shells. So if you were going to continue with the pattern in your even row, you'd work three double crochet, chain two, three double crochet into that space. And that's why we use the three chains. And that's that. You're just going to complete the third row. I'll catch up with you back at the beginning and we'll be all done. We're on the home stretch. We chain our last two to hop over our last shell and into the corner space, single crochet, chain three. And if you're still working the pattern, finish with a single crochet. If you're finishing like me or wherever you finish this row, you're just slip stitching to join to the first single crochet because we all began our row with a single crochet. You can fasten off or if you are continuing with the pattern with the same color, you would just slip stitch into the next chain two space, wherever that happens to be. Chain three counts as your first double crochet. Finish the shell with two double do crochets and then three double crochet into each chain two space all the way around. Remember, on the shell row, your corners are shell, chain two, shell. And you can keep repeating that little pattern, odd, even, odd, even, as long as you want. I think three rows is just enough for me. I'm going to fasten off. Take a moment to weave in my tails and then we'll talk blocking. Because I have such a colorful blanket, I really like the opportunity to add a bunch more colors to my border. I feel that it continues to bring that interest and excitement into the border. And because we use the brick stitch, it's a very calm stitch. It's not super complicated, doesn't have a lot of bizarre angles, so it really does look nice in solid colors or using all of the colors in the rainbow. Let's talk blocking. If you're brand new to blocking a project, whether it's knitting or crochet, then we have two very helpful video tutorials that we'll link down below in the description box and also the pinned comment, and we invite you to check them both out because we go into pretty good detail about how to steam block and also how to wet block. Now for a project like this, because it's so large, being a blanket, I would recommend the wet block technique. And I would also recommend that to you if you've never blocked a project before. Because it's a lot easier, it's a lot more forgiving, and you don't have to worry about possibly burning your little fingers. 
Wet block also doesn't mean that you have to get the entire project dripping wet and you don't have to wash it either. In fact, one of the easiest ways to block a large blanket is to lay towels down on the floor, probably best if you use the bathroom because you want to have a tiled floor. And if you don't have enough room, then laying a double layer of towels down on the floor in any room that you've got space uh, using those little foam mats that all kind of interlink, you could put those down with towels over top. It's up to you, but you're not going to get your blanket really wet. Once you've got your towels laid down, you're going to stretch your blanket out, you're going to pat it as flat as you can, then you're going to take a little spritz bottle and you're going to fill it with plain water. Nothing else, no conditioner, no chemicals, no soap, nothing, just regular water, and it should be about room temperature. Then you're going to just carefully go around your entire blanket, working on about a square foot at a time, spraying it until it's damp, but not soaking, and then just easing it out. You pull a little bit along the blanket, you pull a little on the stitches, and then you pat it into place. Pull a little more and pat into place. And if it doesn't quite want to give, give it a little bit more spritz. Because as you add water or steam to stitchery, it loosens up the stitches, it eases up the tension, and then patting it into place on top of something like a towel and maybe pinning it or weighting it down will allow it to dry in the right position. Why do we block? Well, blocking is the professional way to finish off a project. It allows you to shape and ease your fabric to the final overall look that you want. So if you've got a little bit of tension or a little bit of rippling, the whole blocking process helps to even all that out. So I invite you to check out those two video tutorials that we've done before. It really does go into better detail about how to block and just leave your blankets to dry at least 24 hours or more, especially if you're in a humid area because you don't want to wrap up a present or ship off a blanket or even start using it if it's still damp. So make sure your blanket projects are completely dry before you do anything with them. And that's it. We hope you enjoyed the 2021 Crochet Along Calendar Blanket, our Mighty Mile a Minute. And we hope you had fun and we hope you learned something new. Remember, all of those strips can be turned into their own little blanket and this brick stitch border will work on any of them. That said, we hope you have a wonderful week ahead and we will see you soon here on the Jaden Stitches Show. Stay safe, stay crafty, and a very happy holidays. Here comes 2022. Bye guys. Hi everybody. Mr. and Stitches here. Thank you for watching today. Here are some of our other videos you might be interested in. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe.